Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this week's weekly nursery tour. Today we're going to do a little bit of a different nursery tour. We are obviously out here in the production area of the nursery. It's a gorgeous sunny day here uh, in North Carolina approaching the very end of August. It is just crazy. September is just right around the corner. Mums. Here we have our crop of mums for this year and they have done gorgeous. They are just stunning for this year. Um, and they're not even really finished growing yet. Um, so for those of you that don't know, so Creekside Nursery is a grower retailer. So we grow the vast majority of our plants that we sell at the nursery. Hence why we have our mums going. For those of you that don't know, mums actually like to grow in the heat of the summer. We planted these, it was really kind of around mid-June. We think of like Father's Day, that's the typical time that we plant our mums. These are all in 10 inch containers uh, and they have two, two mums per pot. We do have a couple of big beauties back here in the far corner. If you can tell, maybe they're a little bit taller. We ran out of our 10 inch pots and so Jerry had some three gallon containers. So he used those and put three uh, plugs in there per pot. Now, when we grow mums, when we grow anything around here at Creekside, we like to grow them big. And I'm gonna pick this one up. This year we did something different with our irrigation system. In the past, we have run drip tape through them. This year, we used the same emitters that we use for hanging baskets. This way, if I just wanna pull one mum out, I can. When it was the drip tape, we would have to pull the whole tape out and use the, take out the whole row. But look at this beautiful, look how big that is. And they are putting on lots of beautiful buds. Jerry has, you'll notice that they're kind of maybe a little limpy, a little, a little thirsty. Uh, he does that because he wants to put the plant under some stress. When mums are under stress, they will start to put out their buds. If you continue to, f to fertilize, um, a heavy fertilizer on them, they will shoot out new growth that will go above these buds. So that's how he controls when the mums will bloom. He, give or take, he's back there on the camera shaking his head back and forth. I just give you the very basic layman's terms on this, um, but we have had in the past where they have gone to bud like way too early, like into July, you know, cause they were under stress. So what happens is, is he'll just suck the fertilizer to them. We can fertilize through this system. So he will um, shoot the fertilizer to them. They'll pop out new growth and then they're fine. So he will turn on the irrigation system later on. So that way they can get the water they need, but you can just, you can like look down that row. Like everybody's just what I call kissing one another, which is perfect because they're not gonna hurt each other as far as like be misshapen, but they have lots of room to grow and be huge. We do basically all the colors. There's yellows and oranges, pinkies, reds, whites, all the different ones, and mums bloom at different times. So we'll have early bloomer, mid bloomer, late bloomer. Once they start to put on some color and they crack some color, then we will take them down to the nursery and have them available for sale. But we thought it would be really fun just to kind of come through here, give you an update on how these great mums are doing. Um, we do treat, I personally treat mums as annuals. These are all Belgian mums. So if you get them from us, quickly and get them in the ground and give their roots time to get established, they will be perennials. Not all mums are perennials. Belgian mums will be a perennial for us. So if you want to have your mum come back year to year, make sure it's a Belgian mum and make sure you get it in the ground in time for the roots to get established before the cold of the winter hits. So update on mums and now we are going to take a little detour over my right shoulder and we're gonna go check on the sunflowers that Jerry planted a couple weeks ago um, in what was to be the pumpkin patch. They are doing great. Okay, so here we are at the sunflower patch. 
you will remember, it's about a bit, been about a year ago that Jerry and I went to go visit Laura and Erin, garden answer. When we were there, she was actually picking pumpkins the day we got there. And I was so inspired by all of her gorgeous pumpkins and I had that fall fever. And I was like, I'm going to plant pumpkins. Came home, ordered a ton of pumpkin seeds. And we knew that this is where we were going to put the pumpkin patch. Well, Y'all know life happens, right? Life happens for us, life happens for you, and the best laid plans just kind of go So that's what happened because I knew with the pumpkins that I didn't want to plant the seeds until we had irrigation on this spot. Crazy spring, right, with the nursery and everything, and Jerry was having to install irrigation all the way from the production houses all the way down here. Long story short, it didn't happen. So what we said was, let's plant some sunflowers this year because sunflowers are so easy. They are just the easiest flower ever on the planet, I think. And we have long time experience growing sunflowers. Perfect fall plant, right? So we planted, Jerry planted, um, I don't know, this is the first batch. And so he's gonna come back and plant in the next couple of days, another batch next door. So that way we have kind of a succession, you know, supply of sunflowers. We plan on cutting these and having these available at the nursery for sale. So folks can come and buy cut flowers of sunflowers. They are all in those autumnal colors. They are the, all of them are from the Pro Cut series. We get them from Johnny Select Seeds in Maine. Love that company. They have a wonderful germination rate. But the Pro Cut series of sunflowers are meant to be cut flowers. So it is a single stem. So that means for one seed, you get one flower and they are pollenless. Well, what does it mean if they're pollenless? It means it doesn't make a mess on your kitchen table or your, you know, your, your end table with all the pollen that falls. I had just cut some Cosmos the other day and I looked down, I was like, oh my gosh, what is, <laughs> what is all over my table? And it was the yellow pollen. The Pro Cut series will not do that. So they're very neat plants, gorgeous colors, they are all here. Each row is a different color. Um, they are staggered. We're not really concerned about which row is which color because when they start to bloom, we'll know. Uh, but it's really fun. And it is, it's just, if you have kids and you want to like introduce them to like seeds and what seeds do, like a seed, you know, you plant it and you get a plant out of it. I always recommend sunflowers. If you've got a sunny location, then sunflowers are so easy. They germinate well. The bugs don't like them. This is not on irrigation. We never got the irrigation all the way down here. It's about, oh, I don't know, 100 yards from me. So once we plant the pumpkins or get ready for the pumpkins next year, we will have water down here. Um, so it's not on irrigation. Everything that you see has been from rain. You can see if there's some little bare patches, it could just be that either the birds got them or when we did get some rain that they washed out. But update on the sunflowers. Of course, we will keep you updated on this. But another thing about sunflowers is they germinate fast and they grow fast. So this will be perfect all the way through, gosh, uh, October, and we'll have lots of fun sunflowers. We've got one more thing that we want to show you. We have some perennials actually inside the greenhouse growing. Why would we put perennials in the greenhouse in August where it's so hot? Well, come on and I'll tell you why. So here we are in production number two, and we have a good little selection of perennials growing in this greenhouse. Now, for those of you that don't know, greenhouses in August are really hot. Uh, but this one is not so bad because, of course, this is the new one, right? And we have the roll-up sides. The doors are open, so the ventilation in here is really good. It's not unbearable in here. The reason that we are growing tons of echinacea, all of our echinacea in this greenhouse right now is because we do live in North Carolina and we have um, lots of afternoon thunderstorms here currently, N afternoon, night, early morning, all the time. And then our humidity level is just out the roof. Echinacea like to be dry. They do not like to have soggy, wet roots all the time. We did have it out on the production field and we noticed that they were on the struggle bus big time. They were not happy because they were getting too much water and the humidity was too high. We cannot control the rain. So what we did is brought them into the production house where they can grow. And man, 
they are absolutely flourishing this is that sombrero lemon uh, improved lemon yellow improved what I planted in the backyard beds so they're putting out new growth the foliage looks really nice something's been chewing on it it's fine um, but it doesn't have powdery mildew they are very happy and growing so they have responded really well here this way when they're under the greenhouse we can control the water the only way they're going to get water is by what we give them so overall i mean they have done really well you can see on this one this was the salsa red so this is what was happening you had all the foliage that was dying it was rotting so we pulled it in time and then this is the new growth that's starting to flush out clearly this one was about we were about to lose it but it's coming back and it's okay so it'll just hang out um, and be just fine then over here we've got some of the magnus purple cone flower that is doing really well magnus is just one of those i mean classic classic varieties that traditional purple cone flower that we all know and love very much like it dry and hot so i mean the foliage on this is just beautiful absolutely gorgeous don't be surprised if you see this uh, <laughs> in the landscape really soon in jenny's yard and then we also have the um, perennial sedums they are growing back here this is tiramisu and so they are going nice and happy everybody can be dry you can see some of the ones in the front that were that were way too wet we'll see how they come back um, they may or may not but at least we were able to get them out or it just may take some time for them to come back and then the day lilies they would be fine outside but somehow they just got stuck in here um, on accident but that is a little update here at the production area between the mums and the sunflowers and all the things growing uh, we would love to, for you to come see us our new fall hours are still wednesday through saturday we're just changing our time just a little bit from nine to two so come see us wednesday through saturday nine to two and that will be um, from here until we close we will close this Saturday before Thanksgiving. We will close for the season and then reopen sometime in February. So, as always, so thank you so much for joining with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.